dear friends good morning today is international mountain day so wish you all happy international mountain day it is my proud privilege to welcome you on behalf of professor brahm singh horticulture foundation bshf a not for profit organization and my own behalf to this 5h webinar series talk number 20 bshf is thankful to nipa new india publishing agency new delhi for sponsoring this webinar series i am happy to welcome co organizers dr pritam kalia icr rafi ahmed kidwai award former head division of vegetable science and coordinator school of horticulture sciences icr iri new delhi and dr shailendra rajan former director icar central institute of subtropical horticulture lucknow today the webinar is on future tissue culture industry by dr manish mishra principal scientist crop improvement and biotechnology division icar central institute of subtropical horticulture lucknow <coughs> tissue culture provides us horticulture planting material faster and true to the type which is genetically pure today tissue culture constitute an <coughs> indispensable tool in the advancement of agriculture sciences and modern agriculture plant biotechnology is dependent on tissue culture plant tissue culture is basis for development of agriculture human health and well being in general and this tissue culture in agriculture uh, is an aid in colonial propagation shoot multiplication or axillary shoot multiplication or adventitious organogenesis callus to organogenesis somatic embryogenesis virus elimination in vitro grafting in vitro gene banks stock plant banks somatic variation managing natural variation induced mutation in vitro screening and selection and third r microspore culture and production of haploids leading to double haploids protoplast culture somatic fusion dna transformation system recovery of regenerants from transformed cell cell culture biosynthesis in bioreactors production of secondary metabolites Uh, metabolites etc to me bioreactor produce food or nutrients would be available of the self in near future tissue culture techniques were manipulated for improvement of plant growth biological activities transformation and secondary metabolites production dr manish will throw light adequately on future of tissue culture industry questions can be raised in comment or chat box which we take after the talk now i request my colleague dr pitam kalia for formal introduction of the speaker dr kalia please thank you sir good morning everyone uh, it's indeed a pleasure for me to introduce uh, uh, speakers of uh, different webinar series at the outset uh, most respected uh, dr brahm singh ji uh, who is the founder of vshf and of uh, the webinar series by vshf and co organizer dr shailendra rajan ji uh, today's speaker uh, none else than dr manish mishra who is a principal scientist at uh, central institute of subtropical horticulture lucknow uh, who has uh, long uh, been associated uh, with the research in tissue culture and also taking technology uh, of tissue culture on commercial scale 
Dr. Manish uh, developed the tissue culture protocols of uh, uh, different horticulture crops, including flowers such as uh, gerbera, gladiolus, uh, fruits, uh, oranges, uh, guava, onla, bale, papaya, mango, and jamon. Uh, he has uh, long, uh, uh, along with the CSIR, uh, developed a novel tissue culture technique, which is known as in vitro bioimmunization of uh, banana for rendering plants tolerance to uh, banana wilt disease. Uh, this technology has been commercialized to two forms, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Manish mentioned. He is also instrumental in developing startups in various horticulture technologies. Uh, Dr. Manish has successfully supported three startups to reach break-even point in tissue culture. He has been instrumental in publishing uh, 38 research papers, 18 book chapters, two books, and has guided uh, three PhD students and nine MSc students. Dr. Mishra is uh, uh, secretary of the Society for Development of Subtropical Horticulture. He is a fellow of HSRD Dehradun and is a editor of several peer-reviewed journals. With this significant contribution in this area, Dr. Manish is invited to uh, deliver his talk on future tissue culture industry, uh, which is from infancy to industry, a journey of tissue culture and horticulture sector. With that, I invite uh, Dr. Mishra to take the floor and uh, deliver his talk. Dr. Mishra, please. Um, most uh, respected Padmshri, Dr. Brahm Singh, sir, uh, Dr. Pritam Kalia, Dr. Shalyan Rajan, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to all of you. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. I At the outset, I uh, really thank uh, Dr. Brahm Singh for giving me this platform to share my thoughts on tissue culture industry. If you look at the journey of tissue culture in India particularly, it was in 80s that government of India came forward and started funding research on tissue culture. And there was a lot of hue and cry in those days that so much of fund is being pumped into uh, tissue culture. It was not biotechnology in those days that uh, the fund were uh, given, but it was tissue culture primarily. And uh, what it translated, you know, the funding of government of India in those days, in 80s and uh, especially in 87, uh, translated into the kind of industry that we are having today, which is you know, uh, in 2020, 21 and 22, India produced 500 millions of tissue culture uh, platelets in 2020. So this is a kind of huge industry that came forward. But today uh, I would like to discuss only about tissue culture industry in horticulture crops. And not all, I will not be covering all the crops. Uh, my talk would be uh, basically on the more on the industry part and lesser on the you know the principle of tissue culture uh, because I have been associated with tissue culture uh, for last 28 years doing research consulting in tissue culture uh, establishing startup in tissue culture so my major focus would remain on the industry part but I'll be since uh, many uh, stakeholder would be connected with this talk so I'll just give a brief glimpse on how what is tissue culture and how how it works so i'll i'll be sharing my presentation now with you uh, in a moment i'll talk about the tissue culture industry so hopefully uh, you can see my presentation and uh, is it uh, okay just a moment I'll... Uh, can you see my presentation Yes, yes, it's all right. Good. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So the talk uh, that has been given to me on the future tissue culture technology, but I'll be starting from the present tissue culture technology and then how, uh, what would be future for tissue culture technology. So that would be my talk. And uh, to begin with, I would like to talk about horticulture crops. And if you look at the 
quality planting material of horticulture crop in the in the country it remains scanty you know we have developed around 1600 improved varieties of fruits vegetables flowers tuber crops and plantation crops under the nars system in the past decades but all the uh, improved varieties have not gone to the seed chain because we do not have a very competent uh, propagation system for all the varieties because the propagation system remains more or less genotype dependent and therefore we have not been able to take forward those varieties which are very very important and um, highly could, could have been adopted in a much larger scale because we do not have a very robust uh, propagation system i never said that tissue culture can replace conventional propagation but it can definitely complement propagation system in the country and especially uh, some of the crops which are very uh, you know i mean tissue culture can be gainfully employed such as date palm for example similarly there are several crops which are where you have a male and female plant separate so all tissue culture technology can be very uh, you know suitably employed in those crops and the varieties which we have developed can reach to a large number of farmers i just in a glimpse i brief i'll just show you what is micropropagation micropropagation is just a science and art of multiplying plants under in vitro condition and as, as dr brahm singh was just mentioning there are a couple of ways of doing tissue culture if you take the meristem tip you get eradicate the viruses and you get the quality plants which is being used in potato in banana and strawberry and several crops then if you take explant explant means any part of the plant which is used as the initial material so you can put it in a two different pathways one is called organogenesis where you you know from the explant you get direct shoot or you can put it in the embryogenic pathway where you derive somatic embryos and somatic embryos are very important part nowadays which is being used for secondary metabolic blood production similarly cell suspension uh, again is it, it is gaining very uh, good ground especially in banana for bioreactors so cell suspension again go follows the embryogenic pathway and finally develop the somatic embryos and you get the quality plant so these are some of the pathways that just give you a few examples how these pathways we follow for example direct somatic embryogenesis where you just take an explant and it converts into the somatic embryo and these there are different stages of embryo production right from globular to you know cotyledonary to torpedo stage and then finally the plants these pictures are from my lab you can see on the left it is papaya it's a beautiful regeneration system in papaya that we developed in um, 2007 i believe and this system has gone to the commercial level because we could not make a claim i published this paper uh, uh, in in one of the journals and this uh, this has gone into uh, commercial scale now this somatic emergencies uh, gives gives rise to large number of plants in papaya similarly in mango we tried uh, you know, the right side you can see mango where you have advantage of nucellar tissues so nucellus nucellus are uh, you know integuments which are somatic in nature which are so you can produce clonal uh, plants this uh, technology could have revolutionized the rootstock production in mango but unfortunately the uh, somatic embryos produced they convert into shootlets beautiful shootlets but once the roots is roots are formed and when you go for the field plantation there is a disconnect between the root and shoot system uh, there is a vascular disconnection and as a result plant do not survive so this particularly because mango is a recalcitrant crop and there are several horticulture crops which are recalcitrant particularly all the temperate crops walnut you know all, all chestnut all you can see all those crops are highly recalcitrant to tissue culture and it is because of the semi solid medium which you are seeing here is one of the one of the problem in tissue culture you know and recently it has been seen that the when the bioreactor came these recalcitrant crops are propagating easily so now in future uh, all these handicaps that we have seen in our uh, tissue culture uh, journey might be eased out with with the help of bioreactors so this is direct somatic embryogenesis you can see indirect somatic uh, embryogenesis where you just uh, develop callus first and from callus you develop the kind of uh, embryo and then they 
uh, several examples are there in date palm uh, people have developed in oil palm black paper then uh, direct organogenesis is the most preferred pathway for almost all the fruit crops you can see all these three crops from our lab this is the uh, in the left side you can see bale again it's a recalcitrant crop a difficult crop but uh, in tissue culture system this could be easily multiplied using shoot a uh, nodal uh, part of the shoot similarly on the right side you can see aula implica officinalis uh, this is a, a very high rate of multiplication you get in case of aula under in vitro system and the, the below you can see the picture of jamun from the jamun shoot you can multiply plants very easily through through shoot tips and this this technology is, needs to be uh, upscaled and sh should be uh, should go to the uh, commercial scale but it is, it is still confined to the laboratory now uh, this is uh, something i wanted to share with you from well, infancy to industry how an idea can translate into a big economic development in 1902 one uh, german physiologist dr uh, heberland discovered the concept of totipotency totipotency means the capacity of the cell to uh, regenerate and develop into complete plantlet this was just a thought he proposed a theory a propounded uh, a th theory in 1902 and see how one theory or the concept can really convert into a big uh, industry in 1962 two professors one dr t murashi from university of california and dr f sku these two scientists came together and after a lot of work they proposed developed one nutrient medium for tissue culture which is called ms medium this was the discovery in 1962 and after you know, several decades this still rules the land i mean ms media is the major major medium which is used for almost all the crops for propagation then in 65 it was professor g morel who developed the first commercial micro propagation system of orchid this was the landmark uh, journey of tissue culture and then after that tissue culture never looked back and in 2021 the total business of uh, tissue culture industry was 390 million us dollar so imagine a concept which was came in 1902 converted into 390 us dollar million us dollar business in 2021 so this is what science can do so this is from infancy to industry then uh, let's talk about the biology to business when we talk about tissue culture we often talk or related with planting material alone planting material alone uh, uh, when we when we normally uh, you know give data for tissue culture we always this much millions plant we produce every year but it is not only that the entire gm business of united states or the china the very basic tool for developing gm crop is a robust regeneration system you need a somatic embryos or you need a cell suspension system otherwise you cannot deploy gene of interest so all that business also comes to the uh, tissue culture then uh, in recent uh, decades the cell culture has become very very popular for industry at industry scale i'm talking about where the pharmaceutical compounds are being derived colorants flavors aroma secondary metabolite and th these these are being produced at big big bioreactors so it's a big industry if you club it together it's a big big uh, business so a lot of business is coming from biology i just would in the beginning i said the journey of tissue culture in india and um, uh, actually i have written this topsy turvy it, it is because topsy turvy because there was so much of uh, hiccups and there were so many problems in in the initial phase when ministry of science and technology and ministry of commerce came in 1987 and they decided that okay let's flow the fund to tissue culture research and they made a policy framework and dpt was made the head to uh, look at look after the policy framework they, they developed uh, you know uh, scale for tissue culture laboratory uh, they they gave 100 marks you know for inoculation room this much marks for culture room this much marks for standard of 
for standard operating protocol, they developed SOPs for uh, lab, they developed SOPs for polyhouse, primary hardening, secondary hardening, and the entire policy framework was developed. And about 150 research projects were funded during 87 to 1990, uh, I believe uh, to, up to 2000, it was uh, continuously GBT funded, a lot of research projects in tissue culture. And I was one of the beneficiary who got, uh, you know, two such projects when I joined Agriculture Research Services, I got two huge research projects in Khasi Mandarin, which is Citrus Reticulata in uh, Meghalaya. And uh, we developed uh, a micrografting technique for eradicating viruses in Khasi Mandarin, and that is still being uh, utilized. So about 80 research institutions or the university got benefited with the flow from uh, fund from uh, DBT and DST. And as a result, about 50 tissue culture companies came into being with the installed capacity of 210 million plant per annum. This was between 87 to 1995. And look at today. Today we have about 200 tissue culture companies operating in this country with 500 million plants per annum installed capacity. So this is a fascinating journey when I look at when I uh, when I was writing um, a, a, paper, a recent uh, review on the tissue culture journey. Then I, uh, you know, digged out all this data and it's a beautiful, I, when I look at it uh, you know, from the science point of view, I, 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 I find it very, very fascinating because, uh, you know, kind of research programs that were uh, run in those days has really translated into a very beautiful uh, business. Now in India, uh, the list for tissue culture crops are not very long in term for horticulture crops. Banana, of course, is the most uh, predominant crop in tissue culture. G9 is the leading uh, variety which is being propagated. However, many import, important uh, varieties of banana needs to be micro propagated in this country so that the dominance of G9 is not there. Then in apple, mostly the rootstocks are being uh, tissue cultured and not the cyan varieties primarily. In pineapple, uh, pineapple is one of the uh, recent uh, case where uh, conventional propagation is completely being replaced in pineapple and tissue culture uh, has uh, taken place. As far as strawberry is concerned, uh, uh, you know, tissue culture is not very cost effective in terms of, uh, in comparison to the runner produced uh, plants, but uh, tissue culture plants have you know, distinct advantage uh, compared to the runner produced plants. So they are in the vogue and now a lot of plants are being uh, multiplied by private sector. Uh, pomegranate is one of the very good example where new varieties have reached to a large number of farmers. Maybe, maybe it is Bhagwa or Super Bhagwa. They have been clonally micro propagated and they have reached to a large number of farmers across the country. So this is a very good example. And uh, when I say that, uh, not where tissue culture technology will be most useful is one of the classic example is dead palm where develop, developing plant through conventional method is very, very slow and sluggish. Uh, tissue culture technology has really revolutionized the propagation industry. In uh, other crops, uh, for example, potato or maybe it is anthurium, jalbera, lilium, carnation, or uh, you know, ficus and many other uh, diphenbaceous, all those crops tissue culture is being employed and at commercial scale. And there's, uh, uh, it is established industry, but still the list needs to be increased. And uh, there are many, many robust protocols are available with Indian researchers, and this needs to be upscaled. Now the total market right now, the global market for tissue culture plant is 16 trillion propagules are required annually, which uh, translate into you know the market size like something like four trillion US dollar every year, and that's where India has got a tremendous role to play, because where uh, we have a cheap labor, we have um, very cost-effective production of tissue culture technology, and India uh, India has already chipped in. It is playing a very important role, but this uh, export basket needs to be increased, and um, you know I was talking about other crops like diphenbaceous, ficus, pathoglottis. Cordyline, Jalbera, Carnation, these are some of the important crops which we, need, we we can export at a large scale. 
Now, if you look at the export, which is uh, very, uh, I find it very interesting. You know, uh, out of ten important uh, importing countries, uh, Netherlands is the biggest uh, importing country, which is importing tissue culture produce from India. And in 2021-22, they have imported tissue culture produce worth 17 million US dollar, which is half the basket of total export of tissue culture produce. United States of America is the second country, Italy, Australia, Canada, Japan, Kenya, Senegal, Ethiopia, and Nepal. These are the countries, and we need to increase the number of countries where we can uh, import our tissue culture produce. And APITA is uh, definitely playing a very positive role in uh, expanding the export of tissue culture produce. So we, you know, we, should, not, we, we should not only uh, you know, focus on the domestic market, but we have a huge, huge, huge export market, about uh, 16 trillion uh, US dollar ton uh, uh, plants. So uh, the, the, the uh, our prime minister always talk about the five trillion economy, and tissue culture could be one of the very important industry in achieving the five trillion economy for India. Now some of the weaknesses of our exports problem uh, in, uh, is is one of the problem is high electricity cost. You know, in tissue culture industry should be the tariff should be subsidized because otherwise we will not be able to compete with many other countries where, which are all, also coming up in a big way for the export of tissue culture. And then another recent problem that has been uh, this these problem has been highlighted by several uh, agencies, including the APIDA. They said that the low efficiency of skilled workforce is a very, very big problem. And this is why it is happening, because tissue culture is simply slipping out from the uh, research laboratories. Now, earlier in earlier days, in 80s and 90s, uh, almost every university or the uh, institution, we used to have a good tissue culture lab. We used to have, we used to have very trained manpower which used to act as the uh, you know, training centers. But gradually, you know, biotechnology has taken over and tissue culture was pushed out. It was looked down upon and it was completely erased out from the laboratories. As a result, there are not many, uh, I mean, if you look at in the country, there are not many institutions where uh, you will find trained people in the tissue culture and they could give training on tissue culture. So I think Skill India, uh, should come forward and provide some kind of vocational training in tissue culture so that industry is being supported. Then uh, transportation of tissue culture planting material needs to be designed in such a way that the cost is reduced. Another issue is the uh, we need to have, you know, for all agriculture produce, you have HS code. And these HS code of uh, tissue culture planting material needs to be harmonized with the other nations so that uh, there is not delay in the supply and then there should be a single window system for all the queries raised by forest department or the quarantine department for the export so that uh, it is solved in a timely manner and delivery is done in a uh, you know, time period so these are some of the weaknesses that if we could solve these problems i think we can increase our export tremendously uh, APIDA, as I said, that it is facilitating export of tissue culture planting material to various countries and they are uh, helping in market development, market analysis, promotion and exhibition of tissue culture plants at international exhibitions. And they are participating in the buyer seller meet at different international forum. So any startup or tissue culture company, which is small, which is new in this area, uh, can take help of APIDA so that they can showcase their strength and produce uh, to the international forum and help in the export development. Uh, this is something which I wanted to talk about today because uh, uh, my interest was that I, we should be talking about more on the uh, commercial production, what are the issues, how we can solve it and how, uh, especially for the mid-level, mid-cap level industries or the small industries in India can come forward. DBT, uh, has recognized about 200 companies which are operating in the in India, but there are several tissue culture companies have mushroomed up 
which are not in the list of dbt so uh, dbt claims that about 200 companies are operating i believe that it is more than 500 tissue culture companies small and mid they are operating in this country which are not may, may not be in the list of uh, dbt and they are helping in production of quality planting material so this is of course uh, my lab and uh, you can see production and i at the outset i would like to really really thank dr shalen rajan for his uh, tremendous contribution in in getting the fund from rkb by and establishing a commercial unit uh, earlier we thought in the research institute we should not have a commercial unit i mean why why do you need a commercial tissue culture unit in the lab but dr rajan has had always helped me and supported me for developing this kind of facility which is still exist so uh, some of the issue which i want to talk about at a commercial level what are the issue that poses a big problem the so first we need to have a very good plant quality and plant quality depends on four factors one is genetic purity in tissue culture growth uniformity assured survival and disease freedom so these four aspects needs to be taken care of when we are talking about tissue culture industry now let's talk about the genetic purity because this is a very uh, issue that I, i'll be talking at length and um, that's where the tissue culture companies really loses business they need to have a very good system so that genetic purity is maintained now uh, there are a couple of reasons why genetic purity is affected one is the hormone combination when you are multiplying millions of plants lakhs of plants you need to optimize the hormone combination higher concentration of cytokine and auxin at the shoot multiplication rate or uh, stage or the rooting stage can really create so much variations and therefore optimizing the very right quantity uh, at, at a higher i mean at a commercial scale is very important then dissecting methods is one of the very crucial issue in commercial production i am not talking about uh, for the lab, lab conditions but at the commercial level dissecting method is very important the lesser you dissect the better it is the more you uh, dissect you are going to have chance of uh, variations so uh, uh, we have recently found that even in banana in vitro shoot if you uh, cut it obliquely at 45 degree angle the, this increases the rate of multiplication you know from 2 to 2.2 and 0. 0.2 increase in uh, production fold means uh, millions of rupees then we need to in, ensure the very good incubation conditions conditions where temperature humidity light or darkness is maintained as per the uh, protocol uniformity is again prerequisite uh, for tissue culture plant you need to have a very robust plant selection system need to grade all the plant in category a b c then uh, propagating vessels play a very important role and if your propagating vessel is uh, very transparent it is not opaque it, it gets light from all the sources the now usually you get uniform growth and if you have a slight opaque system in the propagating vessels you get uh, uneven growth then uh, you need to keep uh, optimum amount of plant population in the vessels if you if you put lot of plant if you become greedy and put lot of plant in tissue culture bottles you end up having uh, uneven growth then survival is ultimately uh, is for any tissue culture companies is is the ultimate thing because otherwise you will uh, lose the business so acclimatization method all the sops are there for the industry that needs to be uh, followed and the transportation i said that this needs to be uh, looked into a technical uh, technological intervention is required in the transportation and this needs to be evolved because you know several jiffy bags have come now recently we have developed uh, dr rajan has seen that we developed uh, a, a pvp bags where we can put lot of plants in one bag and there is no need for secondary uh, acclimatization these bags are can be transported in in the country or can be can be flown to one place to another place and they are very light in weight and transportation costs get significantly reduced so there, this kind of intervention required for the industry and then uh, we must um, for tissue culture disease freedom is one of the major character and this needs to be maintained so first of all selection of the starting material is very important that you uh, take your mother plant very seriously 
uh, the mother plant should be free from the diseases it should give good yield and then we should have a very uh, good diagnosis method maybe it is molecular diagnostic or elisa but should be very uh, good methods and then propagating condition needs to be maintained as per the sop so these are this, this is the first issue that i wanted to talk about on the plant quality then every laboratory every tissue culture company should be consistent consistent in this supply if you cannot utilize your laboratory for throughout the year you cannot get the cost benefit ratio you cannot get the break, breaking even point so so four factors will play important role you need to know what are the crop what are the um, varieties that are ruling the land because everybody you know in gladulus every time new variety comes in jerbera new varieties are coming so first find out what are the leading varieties that you need to multiply what will be the season where you can uh, you can uh, supply your planting material which will be the area what are the areas where tissue culture uh, planting material can go and what would be the quantity because quantity will decide that when you have to start a business because tissue culture is uh, uh it, it, it is a, not, it is always have a has a fixed for a time frame so you have to decide where when you have to start propagating material and when you have to acclimatize and supply it so these four factors must be kept in mind before um, any uh, commercial operation is taking place and then um, uh, you cannot uh, go ahead without cost benefit ratio when you are talking about the commercial production so the first issue that comes up is the rejection there are a lot of rejection in tissue culture in tissue culture plants and this needs to be reduced you know what are the factors that cause rejection i will be talking about then of course efficiency and efficiency depends on three factors one is man number of manpower then you have machine your laminar flow your autoclave and the space the kind of space you have so and then rate of propagation for every crop rate of propagation is different and you should be at par with the commercial scale like for for example in banana it is 2 to 2 2.2 and for other crops it is different so multiplication rate should be at par with the commercial uh, expect now what are the cause for the rejection i was talking about one is the major cause for any tissue culture manager or anybody who do dealing with tissue culture microbial contamination in the laboratory is a major factor and this needs to be dealt with very iron hand so first is air quality you now we have a sensor which can tell you the the kind of air quality we have and this needs to be maintained now season we cannot do much uh, in rainy season you get lot of contamination and you just cannot help it but productivity also affect also you cannot help here when you go for higher level of productivity you get more contamination so these two factors cannot be controlled but uh, if we are very cautious then these two factor can be taken care of we have to reduce footprints in the tissue culture lab the lesser is lesser the footfall the better is your lab so try to avoid people uh, visiting tissue culture laboratory as much as possible the second factor for uh, rejection is mortality during acclimatization now now uh, let we have a good infrastructure in for primary and secondary hardening for almost all the uh, good tissue culture labs so this is not to be bothered but season again is a problem here you get a lot of mortality and then of course uh, methods for acclimatization it is still improving there are lot of interventions are required where acclimatization can be the time for acclimatization can be reduced then secondly the survival can be increased using several uh, you know microbial consortia using various kind of vessels uh, using artificial intelligence in the uh, primary uh, hardening so all these factors methods can be improved still there is a scope for in the future tissue culture technology this could be uh, improved now let's talk about uh, this is the data i have taken from jan irrigation i just wanted to show you how uh, season affect see this is the data 
in the uh, summer rainy and winter season and how rainy season you get more than 2% uh, uh, i mean um, higher in, in infection rate in the air, air quality you can see and this is the profile of contamination in the culture vessels so in the rainy season both fungal and bacterial contamination will remain high compared to the summer or the winter so this is something which you cannot help much but uh, we need to be very very cautious during this period we need to reduce the traffic uh, in the laboratory we need to take care of uh, the fumigation of the laboratory we need to uh, do all the uh, gap good agriculture sorry good uh, lab, lab practice glp we need to follow glp during the season so this is we need to be very very conscious in the rainy season which is very clear and then productivity also affects the contamination when you go for higher productivity say 10 million plants you get higher higher uh, microbial contamination uh, and when you you are a small company or the mid company the level of contamination is low but for all laboratory if your contamination level is less than 2% it is okay but if you go beyond 2% in any setup maybe it is small or the medium or the large company uh, your cost benefit ratio will be impacted so this we have to keep in mind microbial contamination is one of the major challenge that we have to uh, face throughout the year now, some of the basic things that how to reduce contamination. Uh, you know, first of all, explant needs to be decom decontaminated. And nowadays, all the uh, explant or mother plants are grown in the polyhouse or in the net house where the regular uh, fungicide is being sprayed. It is being drenched, and uh, so that uh, the internal microbial load is reduced. Then laboratory need to be clean. It is uh, SOP is there. We we also follow standard operating protocol for laboratory cleanliness, regular fumigation, personal hygiene, positive pressure in the lab, regular air microbial load audit is very important, and quality assurance practices needs to be followed in every lab very religiously throughout the year. Now another the point I was talking about the genetic uniformity is. Uh, you know, in tissue culture, we do not like somaclonal variations. For a crop improvement person, somaclonal variation is a very beautiful thing. It is a good thing for a crop improvement, but for tissue culture, it's a loss of business. And usually you get about 98% plants which are normal in any situation and 2% plants you get which are off type. Now, off type plants are usually uh, most of the plants which, which we call them off type and grading and screening is very important at in vitro stage at primary hardening and at secondary hardening so all these stages you get off type plant and very experienced person can only uh, can only pick and uh, remove those off type plants usually we get dwarf plants which are stunted in growth they are of somaclonal variations then very tall plants suddenly we need to that take take out those population we get variegated plants and deformed plants. So these percentages where you get maximum plant are, are uh, you know, stunted are off type plants. So every tissue culture manager or the person who is in charge of tissue culture facility should have an eye for off type plants and should reduce because once the off type plant goes into the supply chain, then your credibility is at stake. Uh, another very important issue which I wanted to talk about is the soma variation due to subculture. Now what happens is usually uh, as per SOP, we say that only six subculturing cycle is preferred. So there's, there's no priority change, there's no somaclonal variations. But in order to get more money and in order to reach to the break even point very quickly, some companies, and I would not name, but one tissue culture company in Lucknow area was banned because of the high rate of subculturing. So when you keep on going for higher rate of subculturing and go up to 30 subculture cycles, you get 28% off type plant. And when you go for the six subculture cycle, you get three, 4%. I mean, usually it is 2% uh, off type plant, which is, which is normal. So every, every tissue culture company, which is starting almost all the big companies follow the rule, but some of the young companies, they try to you know go for eight or twelve 
this is the norm. Eight to twelve, they will go for. It. Even if you tell them, this is okay, sir. This is okay. I mean, this time, this is our second year and first year, and we have to reach the break-even point. So why not eight or twelve? But this impacts your credibility in a big way in, in in future. And once a farmer receives plant from your company and it is off type, uh, make sure that he's not going to buy it again. So better keep it at a six, uh, and then your somatolin variations are lesser. Now I was talking about the efficiency. As I said, manpower distribution is very important. Most uh, people requ are required for the subculturing work, which is a semi-technical kind of work. And this is where I was talking that this kind of training is missing. This kind of training is missing from this country. There are not many centers which are teaching this subculturing because 60 percent manpower is required for the culturing. This is non-technical work. Anybody can do washing. And there are several other works which any, anybody can do. This is again screening requires a training. And where you screen off the plants in the tissue culture, in the primary health, primary hardening and secondary hardening. Then uh, as you go, um, the productivity affects the manpower. Uh, if you are producing 1 million plant, your manpower requirement would be different. And if you are producing 10 million plant, your manpower would be uh, different. But the technical manpower, which is which which is which means you need a PhD person, uh, it requires you need very few people at the PhD level. But you certainly need a lot of people. When I say non-technical, means uh, people who have done graduation or uh, vocational training in tissue culture. Large number of people are required for uh, when productivity is very high. So, so efficiency uh, comes with the manpower space and machines. Now let's talk about the future part. This I spoke about uh, uh, about the present tissue culture industry. Uh, what are the constraints? What are the problems? Where there is a scope and how it can grow? All, all that I spoke. But I wanted to speak about the future tissue culture technology which lies with the bioreactor. So we have been doing plant tissue culture uh, for last 30 years and we propagate a large variety of plants. The conventional method uh, is using semi-solid medium, which contains agar as a solidifying agent. It was um, developed decades ago. Agar is very simple. It uh, anchors the plant, develops the rooting system, and it's very simple, and therefore it was followed for the industry. But there are a couple now, as I, I as I mentioned, the skilled workforce is, is, is limited. Second, you need more automation. You need lesser human intervention in tissue culture. And therefore, this temporary immersion system or TIS has come into the play. And this is also we also call it temporary immersion bioreactor. So the, this technology is basically you provide liquid medium devoid of agar number one, and you just flush the uh, medium into the plant for a very limited period at a particular interval. So instead of earlier, what was happening that the X plant was inserted into agarified medium, where only a bottom part of the plant, bottom of the plant was was absorbing the nutrient. Here the nutrient medium is given to the entire plant. It is being absorbed from all the portion of the plant. So just immerse it for temporary period and just remove it. And then there is a more of gas exchange in bioreactor, which was not taking place in the, in the traditional system of tissue culture. So three primary, so three basic difference. One is it was a solid system. Bioreactor is a liquid system. Two, there were no gaseous exchange, lot of gaseous exchange. Three, continuous nutrient exposure, and here it is a temporary uh, nutrient exposure. So these are the small differences, but it can create huge, big difference. And so now see, there are two types of bioreactors which are being used, which, are, which has been developed. One is called continuous immersion bioreactor. Now, bioreactor requires 
you know, this is a very simple system. You just need a glass bottle, a big glass bottle. You need a filter. You need to put inlet and outlet. You need to put a 0.22 micron filter at this stage so that uh, air is purified and goes inside. In the continuous uh, bioreactor, the plants are submerged all the time and the oxygen is provided. CO2 rich oxygen is provided here and it kind, kind of create aeration in the bottle. Now, several forestry crops are being propagated through this method. For example, eucalyptus, for example, tea. CIS bioreactors are used. For majority of the horticulture crops, it is temporary immersion bioreactor that is being used. Now, temporary immersion is the, is the immersion of X plant in the liquid system for some time. Okay, so this is the uh, temporary immersion system, which I will be talking about more in detail. Um, so the advantage with TIS bioreactor is that it is uh, less time consuming. As I was talking about that positioning of X plant, positioning of X plant is such that the entire plant gets submerged. You can see here, the entire plant will be immersed, not the bottom of the plant, but the entire plant. It reduces cost because number one, more number of plant can be accommodated because there is no agar, so cost of gelling agent is, is gone. It is less labor intensive, more automation, uh, it's a liquid media. So this is a very cost effective system. And besides cost effective, another important part of TIS system is uh, those who understand tissue culture very well and will understand there is a problem of hyperhydricity. So this hyperhydricity is very pronounced in, in this semi-solid system of tissue culture. In mango, in several crops, you tend to get uh, very, very hyperhydric uh, plants and they ultimately do not convert into a normal plant. So this is completely takes care of. There, there is no hyperhydricity in the TIS system. So uh, next, uh, I mean, some system I just wanted to show you. This is uh, by Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. They developed recently. And then this is a low cost bioreactor developed by Malaysian Nuclear Agency, Malaysia. And with this idea, so the principle of TIS bioreactor is the first stage is the stationary phase. You can see here, there are two platforms. You can see here, there is a plant. And then there are small capillaries in this plate. And this is the liquid medium, which is kept here. This is the stationary phase. And then there is an immersion phase where through the pneumatic pump, the air is pressed and this pushes or expulses the nutrient into the, into the upper chamber and the plants are submerged. You can see this much portion of the plant is completely submerged. So the plant absorb nutrient from all the sides. And then this is a drain phase where again, due to gravity, the pump will stop. Due to gravity, the medium will come back into the lower chamber. And this is a ventilation phase where the oxygen is supplied. So these are the basic principle. Normally, usually uh, this, we lift this every hour, sometimes in some crops it is two hours, sometimes some in some crops it's four hours. The requirement of the nutrient immersion varies with crops. For example, we have developed a system wherein uh, we give immersion every two hours for three minutes. So this requirement varies with the crop and your uh, phase of tissue culture, whether it is shoot multiplication or it is root phase or whatever what phase you are in so it will vary so these are the requirements you need to parameterize with each crop so these are the principle of bioreactor now one of the most famous bioreactor that was developed and evaluated was several horticulture crops i am talking about horticulture crops alone this was developed in brazil rita bioreactor uh, as i said this is always uh, it has two chambers and there is an inlet that crosses from the top to bottom, which provides air. Then there is an outlet from the, uh, and every inlet and outlet is connected with a 0.22 micron uh, filters. So one pump is off, the liquid medium is in the lower compartment, it remains here. 
when the pump is on, it impulses the air. You, you can see the air is coming inside and there's a pressure in the air. The overpressure moves the medium up and cause immersion of the expand as well as the air expulsion through the outlet filter. When pump is off, the medium goes down by gravity. So this was developed, patented uh, in Brazil and it was commercialized and several companies are selling this uh, Rita bioreactor. Very expensive one. Uh, I purchased one by Rita uh, recently. It has costed me 72,000 rupees. You can imagine the cost. Now, plant for bioreactor is another bioreactor. Uh, the concept remains the same. Here it is uh, sort of uh, horizontal. The pump is off. The liquid medium is in the lower compartment again. Then uh, once you uh, the pump is impulses air through the central inlet filters, they, are, they have given several. This comes from here. And then there are several inlet filters here, which gives air. The overpressure moves the medium up, you can see here, and causes the immersion of the explant as well as the air expulsion. When the pump is off, the medium comes out. Now here the they have given additional aeration system. The pump impulses air through any of the lateral, there they have given several lateral in, inlet filters, which circulates air in the, uh, in the bioreactor, but do not cause the translocation of the medium. But there is a lot of air circulation, and uh, they say that plant form bioreactor, especially it works very well for date pump. Uh, this has been evaluated in the uh, UAE, and this, they have found that this is a beautiful system for. They have evaluated both platform and Rita. They found that plant form works very well for date pump tissue culture. So this is uh, another very simple method. Somebody uh, designed is called rocker bioreactor. It's just the shaking due to the angle of the container. The medium is a separate section from the explant. And when the container moves with the degree of angle, the explants are immersed in the medium. But this is not effective because there's a lot of energy requirement is there. And then um, not many plants can be accommodated. So I just wanted to show you this rocker bioreactor system. Well, uh, a, there is another called two flask bioreactor, which I showed you in the Malaysia. Uh, people have developed. Uh, it's very cheap, very, very uh, simple system where you have two flasks kept side by side. One act as a reservoir for the nutrient. The other where the plants are kept. Once the pump is on, this liquid medium goes into this another uh, uh, flask. And it submerges the plant uh, for a certain period of time. And again, this medium comes back to the reservoir. So it is temporary immersion. But to you, but this again, it has a problem because uh, there are several reservoirs you have to keep, and ultimately uh, the space requirement is not fulfilled, and not many plants can be accommodated in this system. So this was also not a very valid uh, bioreactor. Well, uh, uh, another uh, bioreactor, which I was discussing, two flask bioreactor <clears throat> with additional force ventilation, which, which, which was developed. Uh, this was, the concept came beautifully. They made one reservoir of liquid medium and it connected with a large bioreactor. And this was the medium was pumped into this and then it, it comes back again here. A large medium means some 20 liters or 50 liter medium you can keep here. So pump once the pump is switched on, it impulses the air through the flask containing the medium, forcing its movement into the culture vessel. Once the immersion is completed, the pump is switched off and the medium flows back in the reservoir under gravity because this is kept slightly below the main reservoir. And CO2 in which air is pumped through the inlet and the pipes are directed to the culture vessel head space. But one of the major problems which uh, scientists have found in this bioreactor is that once there is a contamination, slight contamination, it completely contaminates the entire propylus, which was not the case in case of Rita, which was not the case in case of uh, plant form. But in this kind of TRI bioreactor, 
uh, once everything is fine as fine as long as your contamination is not taking place but once you get the any microbial or bacterial contamination it will circulate into the reservoir and the reservoir will uh, you know send it in, in the entire uh, vessels and therefore there will be major mishap so this was also rejected so looking into the different uh, part and then thinking that what should we do um, we uh, came up initially with a very crude kind of bioreactor in CISH, and this was uh, this is the uh, these boxes are available in the market. You can see here, and then uh, for the lower chamber, we made two stainless steel chambers, one for the top and one for the bottom, and there was a very minute capillaries we made in the system. This is completely autoclavable system. And from the left, we gave, uh, you can you cannot see in this picture, but there are three inlets. There are two inlet and one outlet. There are three inlet, uh, two uh, and one outlet. And we are now, uh, we are working with CPAT, Central Institute for Plastic Engineering and Technology for development of a, a bioreactor, which, which is pasted with the titanium oxide for taking care of contamination, which is self-illuminating on the top and we, we will be filing a, a patent for this. Then uh, in India, another bioreactor that NRC Bio, uh, Banana has developed, this is called an, uh, NRC B bioreactor. They have commercialized already. This is a glass one. And uh, this glass is, uh, this, this technology has been already been commercialized by NRC Banana Tilchi. Well, uh, as in the beginning, you, you were talking about the bioimmunization of banana and novel tissue culture technology, which was developed by Dr. T. Damodaran, Dr. Shalyan Rajan, and myself. And we produced a large number of plants using bioimmunization technology um, for uh, production of physarium wilt tolerant plants of banana. This the process includes the engineering of biomolecule to the banana tissue culture. Actually, uh, uh, initially, Dr. Shalyan Rajan, Dr. Damodaran developed ICR Fusicon technology where a microbial consortia was. Uh, you know, sprayed in the plant for controlling in vitro uh, for, for controlling the fusarium wilt disease. But uh, we thought uh, that why not bring that microbial consortia into the tissue culture system so that every plant is uh, expressing those um, uh, you know antifungal qualities. So they developed the lipopolypeptide based biomolecule, which is found to be antifungal, uh, and we have inoculated co-cultivated this molecule into the organogenesis phase of the banana uh, tissue culture. As a result, a very interesting part was that there, there was a significant increase in shoot and root biomass and reduction in the duration of the shoot and root culture as compared to normal medium. So this was uh, observed and this technology was filed for patent and we produced uh, several lakhs plant and we have tested in the Ayodhya district of Uttar Pradesh and Katihar district of Yom. Shivangi. Shivangi. What happened? Sir, there is Hello. a connection issue from Dr. Manish's side. Manish's side only, huh? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sharendra, could you kindly contact Manish and find out? I have contacted. Hi, he is correcting uh, the uh, laptop with the bat for the battery. The, there was a battery problem. In between, I can, uh, I think, uh, because uh, most of the things have been covered. So if you allow... You oh, yes, it. yes, yes. I think uh, her uh, uh, PPT is with the Shivangi also. Yeah, yeah. Shivangi, no, no, he may, he may, he may, no, no, he may join. Other, otherwise, uh, no, he may join. But uh, we can discuss in the meanwhile. Oh, you want to discuss or you want to no, no. take over no, no. his uh, presentation? No, no, no. If, if Shivangi projects, if Shivangi no, projects, can you continue? No, what he is going to uh, convey, I don't know because I have not seen the slides. But uh, okay, uh, so what you suggest? Uh, 
What is your and, suggestion? Uh, my suggestion is uh, let us wait for one or two minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. He might be connected. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you can. Uh, uh, yeah, sh sh yeah, Shivangi should allow him as he enters the studio. No, yes, she right, will sir. Allow. She is waiting. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. If he is able to enter the, the studio, no, no, he, will be, he, will, he will be able to do that. <clears throat> Battery to is not a major issue, is it? Yeah, yeah. It may take a minute only. Uh -huh. Hello, connect, connect to it? Huh? एक मिनट अच्छा यार कितनी स्लाइड्स रह गई हैं आपकी सात स्लाइड थी अच्छा लास्ट स्लाइड थी अच्छा हाँ आ गया ठीक है ओके ओके वो आ जाएगा वो थोड़ा हाँ सर बहुत लिमिटेड है वन और टू स्लाइड वन स्लाइड सीज़ है लास्ट हम्म एक ही थी लेकिन Shivangi, meanwhile, you just go through his uh, uh, PPT and see where he was. Keep it ready. If need be, we will request you to. Uh, sir, he was uh, in the last the slide arrived. almost. There's just one slide left which has pictures in it. And anyway, you, 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 you project yeah. that. Let okay. him explain from there. As yes. soon as his voice comes, he should not bother of uh, just uh, uploading his uh, PPT, etc. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, you upload. You upload if you can... Uh, uh, project it? Yes, right, sir. Uh, at least. That would be the shorter and uh, quicker. We will request him to speak if he is able to join. And uh, I'm sure he will be able to join. Good. Good to the... Hmm. Uh, Dr. Shailen received which no, this is the first one. Hmm. He was almost yeah, go slow, yeah. Yeah. Go slow. Go slow, but huh? This is the one I think. Yes, he was talking about the technology. Uh, how the immunization can be done by identifying yes. the uh, this repo yes, yes, yes. and yes. the technology uh, it is uh, reducing the input cost in banana cultivation, particularly. The areas uh, where the fusarium built caused by tropical race 4 is important. Not only in uh, tropical race 4, but this uh, technology has been uh, successful in other areas also where race 1 is uh, important. But most important thing is that this technology can be used for many other uh, fruit crops or any horticulture crops. The yes. same principle can be utilized because uh, this has uh, be, we have identified it and this is. Uh, <coughs> This uh, uh, signs uh, can be utilized in different crops, with different species, with the different diseases also, the major diseases. So this is the main uh, theme out of it. And it is a novel technology, tissue culture, also not only eliminating the disease at the uh, level of the plant, uh, uh, disease-free plants, but it is also useful in uh, fighting with the disease which are in the field of the farmer's field or uh, in future also. This technology will be definitely uh, coming up well. So Manish Mishra is there. He can uh, oh, okay, okay. add. To, let him. Let him. Uh, he can add. To, yeah. Uh, Manish, Manish, you continue. Manish, you continue. I'm sorry, sir. It was. A... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Continue. Yeah. Continue. Please, continue. Please, 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 please. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sir, uh, this technology, as I was talking about, uh, a major part was played by uh, Tamodran and Dr. Rajan. And then finally, I took it to the tissue culture level and produced uh, almost uh, last year. We produced uh, about 70,000 plants of uh, bio immunized banana G9 plants. And we uh, again, uh, you know, this is the third year that we have evaluated these plants in the Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. And Bihar government has made a policy 
and they produce uh, plants from our laboratory and from the modern laboratory and from the uh, startup that we have developed and these plants are subsidized and given to the farmers in the bihar that that has become a policy issue in bihar and in uttar pradesh also uh, large number of farmers are uh, taking these plants from us where there is a problem of bill disease so this this technology is not only confined to banana this can be utilized in large number of plants where uh, fungal disease is a problem and this could be replicated in several crops so i am hoping that uh, we we will uh, try in other crops as well in future so uh, this is a next slide can you make it because i uh, ha huh, okay so this is the lab this is my lab again you can see where um, we have trained manpower and we have a uh, very good uh, state of art facility for production of uh, various kinds of um, horticulture crops and banana these are the bioimmunized plants in the nursery stage you can see the the very unique part which we have observed in the uh, bioimmunized plant is that they have got very la very good root system and uh, the time for production of acclimatized plant is is uh, reduced significantly and second the survival in primary and secondary hardening is comparatively higher than the conventional system so this system can be promoted and can be up scaled by two two firms have already taken this technology and they are producing it and hopefully in, in days to come we'll take up more startups in this area so uh, this is all about uh, the tissue culture present industry and the future part and i really thank organizer from core of my heart for giving me this opportunity and very very sorry for the glitch that uh, this was off for some time thank you very much uh thank you very much dr manish you should need not be uh, sorry about that uh, we are all scientists we know our limitations <coughs> don't worry <coughs> it happens um excellent talk and now i require dr uh, rajan just to add value to it uh, and he need not to just to repeat it but simply add value to it because he was associated throughout Wash, wash. Unmute. Unmute. Ah, ah. Uh, thank you, sir. This was a, I should say, very comprehensive lecture by Dr. Manish. Uh, not only status, but the future of the uh, the technology, which is going to be applicable in horticulture. And how he has introduced from the starting journey how the from research labs it has come to the commercial, as a commercial ventures and startups are coming up. He has given several examples. and the lectures was uh, mostly focused on the tissue culture in horticulture crop that too for the industry then presently the future of the quality material he has linked with the success of the tissue culture uh, uh, particularly in the uh, supply of the planting material supply chain and he is very well dealt with the uh, problems with the semi solid medium and other thing and how we can uh, <coughs> come up uh, we, uh, we can uh, Uh, eliminate those with the bioreactors direct he has given examples of the several examples and particularly he has given the uh, most important uh, an application which is coming to be important that is in developing ge and crops for with and the industrial applications not only for the planting material it the technology is going to be more important that's why it is a big, big future then support by the dbt for different institutions and how the journey has come to the 500 million plants per annum that is important and there is given example of the commercial crops which are coming up the stocks which we are going to we are producing not only disease free plant making material but it is also important in the crops like date palm where there is no good alternative for producing the plants where the other ways are very very slow and the date palm industry can have a lot of extension using this technology and he has given not only that a global scenario of the tissue culture industry particularly what is the role of indian nurse indian export and the importing countries uh, the most uh, uh, interesting is netherland and many other players where uh, they are so advanced but indian tissue culture uh, technology uh, industry is going to uh, be important 
particularly for the export. Then he has given the key issues uh, for the commercialization, but also flagged some of the issues by the high electric cost, skill worker, uh, they are lacking all those things. Uh, but he also discussed some of the problems and uh, which are uh, constraints, which are some limitations, which are related to the genetic purity, growth, uniformity, and other uh, survival, disease freedom, etc. And he has given tissue culture in the outlook of tissue culture as a business oriented, uh, uh, I should say, entity and the factors affecting the cost benefit ratio. That was most important. And there, most of the problem is related with the rejection ratio. If it is high, that it is not going to be economical. Then application of uh, artificial intelligence in tissue culture may be the future and different type of sensor being important, uh, not only to, uh, in bioreactors, but in other systems also. The contamination is the important factor. He has flagged and he has uh, already given the how the efficiently we can uh, reduce it. Soma clonal variation, which is uh, com coming up and uh, sometimes uh, it is becoming a problem for the farmers uh, because of a poor quality and how to uh, avoid it. And he flagged the needs of uh, training of subculturing, particularly where we require a lot of manpower. Bioreactor, he has given a great detail of the bioreactors, particularly which are being used in tissue culture. And these are the future for that. And automation uh, leading to the bioreactors where the liquid medium is being utilized, how the liquid medium is important. He has given the basics of the bioreactor in very, very simpler form. People can understand. Otherwise, by understanding bioreactors, it is also somewhat difficult for many of us. So different types of uh, this uh, bioreactors, these are the applications he has given, the temporary immersion, how it is important in the medium, and the examples of different type of uh, bioreactors like this, uh, Rita, all other bioreactors uh, in different uh, countries developed and discussed about the contamination problems in bioreactors also. He has given the example of the NRC banana bioreactor, which has been already commercialized. And I compliment Dr. Manish Mishra and Dr. Anil Varma, who are, who are coming up with a, uh, in collaboration with the CSSIR uh, for the it uh, pro, uh, not only prototype, the working model, which is going to uh, be important for the horticulture crops. At the end, he has uh, discussed about the bioimmunization technology in banana, which is an example for other crops also. Thank you very much, Dr. Manish Mishra. It was a nice talk, and it has added a lot of knowledge uh, to the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shailen Rajan, for nicely adding value to it. Dr. Pitam Kalia, are you around? Dr. Pitam Kalia, Pitam Kalia ji, would yes, you like yes. to add something, uh, please? Uh, yes, sir. We have had a wonderful talk. I must congratulate Dr. Manish Mishra for uh, giving a beautiful talk to the viewers who must be looking for this futuristic uh, technology, uh, right from the academic part level as a laboratory tool to the commercial angle, which is important aspects, uh, especially from uh, raising planting material at a quicker rate uh, using this technology has been beautifully mentioned. Uh, and also he mentioned about that uh, this is a technology which has uh, uh, which is important for, for improvement uh, point of view but here the production aspect uh, from the planting material was to be uh, highlighted which has been highlighted highlighted very nicely uh, i remember that in 1985 when i got my postdoc to uh, work on tissue culture in cauliflower breeding in uk uh, at that time i had opportunity to visit uh, nottingham lag uh, working with Professor Cocking for uh, protoplast diffusion uh, in lettuce and also at that time flow cytometry was just coming up to uh, know the plidy level of cells and then generating into uh, the plantlets which is important part from improvement point of view in any crop as also he has mentioned from uh, resistance uh, from physiorim physiorim build point of view although that was from biomolecule point of view but cell culture can also be used to uh, come up with the uh, cells in uh, cell cultures uh, to uh, um, and screen for different diseases at the cell level and then come out with the uh, plantlets which may have resistance and use them in uh, breeding program. And in my breeding program for uh, uh, this uh, 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 physiological disorder in cauliflower that we have pinking, uh, bracting and uh, riciness, which are three important uh, 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 I mean, uh, polygenic controlled characters and uh, uh, because of variation in environment every season it becomes difficult to separate out plants which are susceptible. So using tissue culture technology uh, that I, I did in my postdoc 
program was useful, quite useful to shortening the breeding cycle and uh, developing the plantlets or coming out with the plants plantlets which are resistant to these physiological disorders. Disorder. So that is the academic part and also how to make improvement in different crop plants, whether it's fruits, vegetables or any plantlet. Uh, this is a wonderful technology and recently we use it for uh, genetically modifying plantlets, uh, developing uh, the uh, GM plants uh, in cauliflower again for uh, Plutella, Xylostella insect pest using the, the different cry genes. So the tissue culture is the basis for almost every aspects uh, uh, that we find from the future point of view and future technology uh, from tissue culture point of view. Dr. Manish has uh, wonderfully portrayed here, which is useful and for future scientists, it's a uh, eye opener to how to go ahead. So with that, I thank uh, Dr. Mishra profusely for an excellent talk. Thank you, Dr. Mishra. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kalia, for excellent addition and additional information. Uh, Shivangi, could you just display uh, the question or observation one by one? Uh, uh, Dr. Manish, if you can read kindly, go ahead. I have some problem. That's why otherwise I would have helped you to read the question. Uh, hope I can, uh, yeah, I can uh, react to Dr. Pius Thomas. Uh, oh, yes. Read and react. Uh, what is the status of... Read loudly and then react. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he has asked, what is the status of micropropagation of papaya at CISH? And with the private industry adopting the CIS, CIS technology. So, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas, so welcome to this platform. I am very happy to see you again here in this platform. He is one of the scientists who has worked in tissue culture for a very long time, and we have been friends for a long time. Dr. Thomas, as you know, uh, we have discussed several times with you that uh, we have developed a somatic embryogenesis uh, protocol. A repeatable, highly robust regeneration system in papaya uh, using the somatic embryogenesis protocol. This technology was completely developed. Actually, it was developed for the GM crops initially, thinking that I went to Hawaii uh, in, in uh, you know, USDA and then I picked up this technology, came back in India and developed it. But uh, this technology has uh, now we are working with the bioimmunization uh, aspect in papaya. So this technology we are developing and uh, we are taking it up forward for the uh, private players. Also. Next, next, madam. Uh, another is Ratna Rai. Uh, what measures can be taken to reduce the cost of production? I have already listed uh, several factors that can reduce your cost of production. It will depend uh, your cost of production or the benefit cost ratio will depend. Number one, what kind of industry are you? Are you a small producing 1 million plant or 5 million plant or 10 million plant? The strategy would be different for all, uh, all the industries. Number one. Secondly, uh, the cost of production can be reduced significantly by more automation. Uh, if you go through, uh, you know, bioreactors, the cost is reduced significantly because uh, and if you uh, can economize the man space and machine, then you can reduce the cost of production. You can discuss uh, it's a no, big topic. Manish ji, single factor uh, 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 subsidize the energy charges. Single correct, factor but, will do. Single factor will do if you get the free energy. Everything compensated. Hope you agree. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Next, next question. Ratna Rai, and again, and it's a hardening of tissue culture plant is still a major challenge in many horticulture crops. I truly agree that hardening remains one of the key issue, uh, especially for the smaller tissue culture laboratories especially for the those which are big laboratories where you have a very good uh, hard K, go to cave biotech or go to uh, giant irrigation they do not have any problem as far as the hardening is concerned because they have uh, installed very good primary hardening and secondary hardening centers but when we start at a tissue culture uh, you know at the research organization or the university level uh, it becomes a problem that is I, I agree with that because we do not have all kind of systems with, with in place Second, uh, biotization or the you know bio uh, acclimatization can can improve the survival of the plant. 
so microbial consortia can be used uh, just a little manish manish ji uh, yes, permit me to add uh, madam uh, there are two things art and science uh, yes. along with science we should uh, develop the art of hardening i think that will help next question next first thank you very nice. good talk. compliments thank you first up no other question uh, no sir uh, shivangi ji no other question say yes no, or no? no no okay then we had i think uh, very educative informative and uh, what should i say the uh, futuristic uh, <clears throat> technology talk which we anticipated from person like uh, dr manish who has contributed a lot and he has uh, narrated all that and i am of the opinion uh, that uh, this uh, tissue culture has got a great future and not only that uh, see we are finding it difficult uh, that the youth is distracted towards uh, agriculture youth is not coming to the agriculture uh, willingly uh, under compulsion they take up the agriculture so there are certain avenues like that tissue culture if you have got a sophisticated one now uh, it is a industry and is a business uh, you can attack the youth in that and manish ji has uh, clearly pointed out lack of training you train those youth provide them uh, financial support to start with they will be self sufficient rather build up the national wealth the he has clearly brought out that there is a demand of uh, tissue culture labs of uh, tissue culture plants uh, of road why we the country should not cash upon that it doesn't need we have got a huge and uh, department i don't know how huge it is dbt so dbt icr and what uh, some other department uh, let them have a consortium and push uh, this type of uh, venture and uh, you see the nurseries in the country and the scope of tissue culture in these nurseries and you can build up the reputation in the world if you uh, provide what manish ji time and again repeated true to the type true to the type uh, pure material genetically pure he has used different terms for that but the purity everybody understand so what we are selling uh, it is that only it is not something different so it comes through that um, uh, uh, tissue culture problems a little bit uh, variation etc which he had talked about they are part of that in every uh, venture it will be there they can be taken care of uh, over the period one can perfect the uh, te technique so uh, i think uh, tissue culture has got the vast scope and if we want to progress uh, let me make a sweeping remark in if we want to make a progress in uh, agriculture we have to resort to tissue culture so with these words i thank uh, everyone particularly dr manish excellent talk and i thank dr rajan i thank dr kalya for supporting and adding value to the uh, talk and uh, be sincere since and <clears throat> regular in all the talks uh, i am thankful to shivangi for nicely conducting it and helping in that and i am thank to all the viewers um hope they must have got something carry home points uh, good luck uh friends um, uh, before uh, next sunday we have got the another uh, webinar the plant on which which is very close to my heart and i worked on that uh, sibakthorn uh, we celebrate 15 december as a sibakthorn day sibakthorn day so please uh, join us on sibakthorn Uh, day on 15 december on next sunday we will announce uh, the webinar that will be on protected cultivation in chatisgarh uh, that uh, flyer will follow little later we don't want to create confusion so let us meet on 15 december those who are interested in uh, on sea buckthorn uh, a wellness crop the health crop and a um, wealth churning for ladakh with these words <clears throat> i thank everyone
Thank you so much. We meet again on 15th uh, December. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you Thank very you much. Sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.